Hi, I'm Megan Lavin, and I am the owner of Allergy Awesomeness, and together with Allergic Living, this is the segment Megan's Minute, where we talk about things that affect food allergy families, and we're glad to have you here. This month, we're going to talk about relationships and how food allergies can sometimes affect the dynamics, especially in a marriage. So you probably noticed, unlike other months, I am not sitting here by myself, but I have this handsome guy here with me, and this is my husband, Claudie. Hello, I'm Claudie, Megan's husband. That's right, and also allergy dad. And together we've been married for 14 years. We have four kids, two of which have uh, multiple food allergies, asthma, and our oldest has EOE in case I am new to you as well. So we asked on my Instagram a few weeks ago some questions that you guys would like us to answer because um, personally speaking, I feel like I do see a lot of other moms talking in other accounts, it's usually kind of a female driven campaign as far as food allergy education and awareness. And believe it or not, but back in the day, how many years has it been? Like three, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, (laughs) I guess that would help. Um, We used to do these monthly uh, Instagram and Facebook lives just because I wanted um, there to be like a dad in this space and for people to be able to like, kind of ask an allergy dad's perspective and those are pretty fun. That was four, four to five years ago. Uh, maybe. But um, I am I went into broadcast. I love like communication and video and media and he is nice and he um, tolerates it, would you say? So he is here as my guest um, and it was really interesting to see the questions that rolled in. Um, and so we're going to kind of stick with the relationship ones, but I did record all the questions that were um, added and I'll try to get to those at a later date. Claudia, do you want to introduce yourself for a second? I'm Megan's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Um, End all be all. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, other than being Megan's husband and father of four kids, to which our two oldest have food allergies, I work in the local school district as a paraprofessional work with kids one-on-one that need help or assistance, whether emotionally or uh, learning disabilities, etc. Yeah, so he, basically what he's trying to humbly say is he's really good with kids. He has a background in mental health. Um, He used to work at mental health facilities before he moved here for troubled teens. Um, And so I rely heavily upon him a lot of times on his kind of opinion and expertise. And we're kind of a yin and yang in many faucets. Um, I'm the more outgoing, talkative one. He's like the quiet, reflective one. Um, I am the type to like get stressed out and kind of be this nervous ball of energy. And he is like the soothing, like it's going to be okay. And so I think that's really helped in our marriage, especially when it comes to food allergies. So we are obviously answering this, these questions from our point of view. Um, we don't feel like there's any perfect marriage. We definitely don't have all the answers, but if by chance maybe some ways or tips that we handle things, if it's helpful, um, then we hope you can implement it. Um, if it doesn't, that's okay. We don't. We know there's kind of, it's easy to feel bad about yourself when you see other couples or other people portrayed online and think, oh, I don't do it that way. Find your own groove, find your own way. And we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still tweaking and perfecting things. So I will go ahead and read the first question. <clears throat> and then we'll both kind of give our take. Sound good? Sure. Okay. So the first question was, I feel like, well, it was more of a statement. So we're going to try and guess what you meant by it. It's hard in those Instagram boxes to type out a lot of stuff. So it said, I feel like my husband is more relaxed than I am. So we're guessing you feel that that's a concern or that is an issue in your marriage. Um, would you say that statement is true for us? That's concern or issue in our marriage. I don't know about either. But would you say you're more relaxed? I am more relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think what I what I can provide to this conversation is, is perspective, right? Mm-hmm. If you're trying to run a traditional home where the husband works outside the home and the wife is at home, um, usually there's a separation of responsibilities and the wife will be the one who has to carry the brunt of doctor's appointments, being at home, dealing with things like that. And so that can be stressful, especially with food allergies in itself. So don't be surprised that in in a situation like that, the wife or you are gonna be 
probably more stressful than the husband. We tend, we tend to be better at car compartmentalizing. So usually if we're at work, we're trying to worry about work and then we get home, then we deal with things. And so understand this, there's usually that dynamics, so like a separation of time and energy that is, that is put into, um, that dynamics of uh, raising a family and then dealing with food allergies with children. So, but naturally, yes, I am the calm one. I am the one who's more logical, um, less less likely to get emotional or react. Um, and so with our dynamics, um, it's, it's very helpful when she's dealing with the stress. Um, it's helpful. I think it's helpful for me to be calm and to listen um, and try to add some rationale to the to the situation if needs be, um, so that we're not, you know, just being reactive to what is going on. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, um, you can tend to look at it two ways. You can be frustrated that he is not, um, as maybe you feel heightened about it. Like he's so relaxed and I'm up here, but I feel like when we're, we're doing well, it, I tend to think of it as a blessing because I can only imagine it just escalating if he was like matching my intensity and yeah. I'm upset about this and da, da 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 So I appreciate that I can go to him and he can help calm me down. And so I think like you mentioned where in many households and um, the mom is the one going to the appointment. So it's more top of mind for us. It's more something that we're dealing with. The school is calling me. I'm the primary phone number you know, the soccer teams and everyone are contacting me. So it's always something I'm dealing with. And so it's easier to get more wrapped up in it. Um, but as far as like relax, I feel like Claudia knows the protocols. I trust him implicitly. I've gone out of town for days and days at a time, multiple times a year to different conferences and stuff. I don't worry about him not feeding them safe things, reading labels, EpiPen. So that's a level of relaxation that you're worried about. Obviously there needs to be a matched level of safety. But if it comes to just getting emotionally involved and taking things personal when in-laws don't act a certain way and other things, try and see it as like, oh, this is good because then we can find the balance, right? When one hot, one's hot, one's cold, instead of being mad that like, you're not the same as me because we have very different backgrounds and very different personalities and you wanna bring out the strengths in each other, which sometimes that it causes friction, but I think if you can try and see it in a positive light, then you can use it for the benefits that it can have. Would you say? Agreed. Okay. Claudia, how about you do the next question? So if you have a difference in opinion on how to handle food allergies, how do you solve it? Um, I would I would imagine in general, uh, it takes communication, right? You have mm -hmm. to discuss pros and cons to whatever it is you're trying to um, figure out or resolve. You have to um, try to be as open as possible not take things personal. Sometimes you may feel, uh, well, I guess I could speak for me. Sometimes I may feel like if I'm making suggestions that if my suggestions are accepted, that I'm not being heard or I'm not being respected or my opinion doesn't count or um, my opinions aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. So that can tend to make you be a little reactive if you're defensive or defensive which takes away from the problem solving and coming together finding a resolution um, as we expressed before you know Megan can tend to be a little bit more emotional emotional than I am I tend to be a little bit more calmer more logistical and so um, usually it's just trying to meet in the middle trying to acknowledge the emotions at hand there's the sense of urgency that there might be or emotional concern and trying to come up with a logical plan um, that can fit that. And sometimes it's also understanding you can't, you can't um, like I know with our kids, you want to protect them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't protect them from every situation, scenario, possibility. You can, you know, that can just tend to amp you up and make you feel more stressed and make you feel like your ideas or the other person's ideas aren't good enough. So you got to really come like, okay, what is the primary concern? How can we best deal with that? Do we need to involve other people? Do we need to communicate with other people? Does there need to be a plan drawn out? Boundaries. Boundaries, routine, educating the child, being mm -hmm. part of it, involving them based on their age and their ability. Um, 
And then the, usually the other part is what we call surrendering. Just like, okay, yeah. we've come up with a plan. We, we're on the same page. We just got to see how things play out. Yeah. Hopefully they play out the best way that we first saw it could play out. And that's what really having a spouse comes down to is you do the best you can, you make a plan, and then you've got each other for however the chips fall, right? Yeah. They've got your back. And uh, just piggyback, you had a lot of great points, and just piggybacking on that, I think even backing up and just being like, we try and save these type of conversations for after the kids are in bed, mm -hmm. because trying to do it when we're getting interrupted and all of a sudden someone's needing help with their homework or this or that, then it's like, oh, I'm trying to start and stop, and that's frustrating. Um, you know, checking yourself emotionally before you start the conversation. Am I bringing baggage from like a bad day at work or being stressed with the kids? So I'm already like heated about other things, like resolve as much as you can before, um, you know, and learning like it doesn't always have to be solved right now, unless it's urgent. But do we need to take a day or two to cool off? And then another thing that's really helped me is um, we've done therapy. We're big proponents of therapy and learning to work on yourself and realizing like, why is this? you know, thing with food allergies triggering me so much? Why is this eating at me so much? Because sometimes you're projecting onto your kids, you're bringing your own baggage up. And then I think one thing that's really helped us is, I think, especially at the beginning of our marriage, I would come to you with a problem and you would think you had to fix it, right? Yeah, that's usually how husbands think. Yep. If you're complaining or you're coming up with an issue that you have, then you must need my help to fix it. And that's typically how we feel yeah our, our responsibility lies and sometimes husbands out there that's not what your mm -hmm. wife Hence wants. therapy yeah so he would get frustrated because so. he'd think I'm telling you how to fix it and what I was actually seeking for and I didn't have the vocabulary at the time was I'm just wanting validation of like yeah that was really hard that the teacher pushed back at the 504 meeting or mm -hmm. that was really hard for you to see our son get left out at the party that must have really hurt and for him to just be able to like mirror that back and just just listen to me like that I think just like squelches a lot of fires right there and those are tools and things that we had to learn through like trial and error and through therapy and through um, working on ourselves and so I think that comes with time and grace so give yourself some time to grow and we're still growing because as our son gets older there's new and newer and newer situations with food allergies that we weren't dealing with when he was like in preschool you know so I'm sure we're gonna continue to learn but I think if those are if there are those good foundations of working on yourself going to therapy keeping communication open um, then you're going to be able to one way or another figure things out as things get thrown at you yeah Agreed. we feel for you we know that food allergies can add what sometimes was like added pressure added strain added worry mm -hmm. um, because just raising kids is really freaking hard like just tonight we were like oh, and all the kids were melting down so we're right in the throes of it with you guys and we hope that whether it's this video or previous videos we've done in the past that well i shouldn't say we that i've done in the past have been helpful in fact i think those facebook lives are probably still on my allergy awesomeness page somewhere if you want to go scroll through those because we tried to answer a different question every month but i did want to address there are some other questions but we're running long on time and there's a lot of themes of like working with the school and I actually did a whole thing on back to school and working on 504 plans um, that you can find on Allergic Living's YouTube page. There's also a question about trusting others, which we're big proponents of date night, finding people. I go through how to kind of um, aggregate some babysitters in some safe ways that you can feel more at peace leaving them. And then there was some questions around families which I answered in December is kind of about family get togethers, holidays, how to handle that mashup. So we hope that, I mean, there, and of course there's tons of uh, wonderful pieces written on Allergic Living's website. So check those out. If you have any comments, leave them below. I always am fascinated to hear what works with other couples, what doesn't. Everyone's got their unique strengths and challenges that they bring. And we wish you guys the best of luck dealing with food allergies in your families and in your relationships. Anything else you want to add? No, just good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Stay positive. Yeah, he's used to being like, and ditto, right? Because <laughs> she, she said it. So thank you guys. Take care.